Stephen Cudeno, Cal Ward of Sports. We're here with Lou DiBella. Man, this is uh, yeah, right. I got it. This is like you know, even for me, I've been in this racket a long time. This is cool as shit. I mean, it's the, you know, cool. this is I mean, cool. Melbourne's a great city. We got a beautiful day today. Greek dancers outside, big crowd to watch the open workout, and one of the biggest events in Australian boxing history. I mean, it certainly will be one of the top three events in Australian boxing history. Probably, likely the second. Um, and if things go crazy in the next few days, who knows? But but um, there are going to be at least 40,000 people in, uh, in, in Marvel Stadium. Um, two of the best young fighters in the world, undisputed, you know, Cambosis and Haney. It's what it's all about. Beautiful, man. I, George... George's confidence is something that's it, right. It's it's very. It, he fuels himself, man. He fuels himself on being the underdog. He fuels himself on him. You know, he'll he, he finds things to fuel himself, and he has this sense that Wilder used to always talk about about manifesting what you see. You know, he you know he's of that mindset. Believe it, achieve it. You know, and. I've never seen a kid this confident. In my entire career, in terms of self-confidence, the he's in the top two or three guys I've ever seen. The, like, and he uses it to fuel himself. He doesn't have an iota of self-doubt. Um, and I think that's what makes him so compelling. I was going to say, when I first met him uh, in Miami, when he was in, in Centeno's gym prior to the Teofimo fight, I remember talking to him and being like, no one's told him he's uh, that that you know he's not but, supposed uh, to win. Uh, you know, he was making ten thousand dollars a fight, fighting on undercards in the middle of nowhere, or fighting on Broadway boxing, my my little series. He had the same attitude he has right now. Like this is not anything new. He's believed that he was the guy since I signed him. And um, one of the reasons why I wanted to sign him, he looked the way he did, all those tats, good looking kid. You know, uh, I could tell, I knew he had ability. I didn't know he was as good as he said he was, but I knew he was good, you know, way better than most people believed. Um, you know, the, he always has had tremendous athleticism and, and a good work rate and, and, and an incredible will. Um, but he's believed that he was the guy since the second I signed him. And then he went out there and did what he did with Lopez. And now, now's the proving ground. Now's the time to prove it. You know, Devin Haney's uh, a great young fighter, you know, and, and I expect a, a very competitive fight. With a victory on Saturday, obviously nothing's given, but, you know, you, you guys are confident, he's confident. Yeah. With a victory on Saturday, does he continue with an ESPN deal or is he open is to, not. like, a Javante or a no, Ryan Garcia? We, we're free agents, um, but we're also not – look, I, I appreciate the value of ESPN. I, I appreciate the eyeballs. It makes a very big difference to be seen on a platform around the world, you know, in, in the U.S. and Canada like ESPN. There are so many households. And then I also, look, you know, The Zone does some great fights, but it's a limited audience on a streaming service. And, and you know, if you want to build your star power, being on ESPN, being on Sky in the U.K., being on other broadcasters that have widespread distribution in their home countries, you maximize the eyeballs. It's easier to build the star that way. You know, I read a lot of stuff Eddie Hearn's been saying about a lot of nonsense about this fight and about about Devin but here's the reality Devin Haney has the opportunity to be undisputed champion he's being treated fairly where we, we we've made this as much of an even playing field as we can but Devin win lose or draw will be seen by more people in this fight than he's been seen previously in all the fights of his career on the zone not that's not a, a, a hit on the zone it's just a reality. This fight is around the world, largely on linear television, all around the world. It's going to do an ast astronomical amount of viewers. And when you fight on any streaming service, you're fighting to a limited audience. Tank fought last week. Tank's oh. a beast, man. He's a motherfucker. Uh, like I'm, I'm, you're not going to like I, you know, I promoted a number of his fights. You know, he, you know, he ain't the warm and fuzziest kid, but it doesn't matter because he's so compelling. He's a little, you know, he's a little brute, man. He's got that, he's got freaky one-punch power for a little guy. He can sit there and actually not throw a lot of punches and just wait and aim and measure, and you're still in trouble. He lands one on you, you're dead. Tank Davis potentially is an enormous fight with the winner of this fight. I was just going to say, uh, and, or Ryan Garcia as well, right? Absolutely. Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis. We're going we're gonna to look at everything coming out of this fight. Lou, uh, thank you so much for the time, man. Thank you for hosting it here. It's going to be amazing, brother. Thank, thank you so you, much, thank sir. You.